We were more like brothers looking out for each other, hung together through thick and thin. Podcast World with Shake and Chad Belly back at you. Another episode. Yukonuba Ducks, the Duck Dogs podcast series at the Foul Life here. We're excited. Hope you all are enjoying the duck season, goose season so far. And remember to uh, keep supporting the partners and sponsors that support us here at the Foul Life and Bandit and Avery and all of our brands that we are trying to work relentlessly on. Today's episode, again, is brought to you by our friends at Yukonuba. If you have a sporting dog or just a pet, there's a food for you out there. And the science and research behind it is undeniable. They're an amazing company, an amazing brand. And we're seeing the results all across the country and all of our duck dogs from Axel to Duff to Wayland to Slash. We have a couple new ones being born right now. We can't wait to get them on that Yukonuba diet. And today I'm humbled and honored to have our guest, professional athlete, professional NFL quarterback, Mr. Carson Wentz. What's up, my buddy? Hey, how we doing? Good, man. How are you? Not too bad. Uh, just uh, grinding away in season right now. Do you ever get caught up in the huddle has it ever happened Carson to where you say something that might be hunting related when you were supposed to say break do you ever say take them do you ever like get messed up at all in the huddle and say something that's pertaining to deer hunting or duck hunting um, I honestly can't say I've done that but uh where we're at here in uh, South Philly I've had a handful of times I'm in the huddle and we've had uh there's a little pond uh, across the street and I've had geese fly right over and I'll say take them or something and guys look at me like crazy and Hey, it's, it's, I can't, I can't help but look up. I mean, they're usually low enough to be shot. So, uh, that's a good reminder. Some of these days, uh, at long football practices, how, how is it comparable? The, the locker room, the, the fall workouts going into the season, I guess it would be uh, late summer workouts when you're preparing for the season, the camaraderie, the brotherhood, the duck blind, the deer camps, the duck camps. Is it, is it, is it comparable Carson Wentz of being with the boys in the locker room and in the huddle as it is to being in camp with your hunting buddies? It is, it is. And that it's honestly, I mean, that's one of my favorite things about, you know, hunt, hunting birds. And it's one of my favorite things about the game of football. Um, and just all the sports I grew up playing is, um, just the camaraderie with the guys. I mean, you know how it is in the duck blind. Some of the some of the crap you guys end up talking about and joking around about, and it's the same same thing in the in a locker room. Um, the only difference is um, in an NFL locker room, you got guys from from all over, from different backgrounds, different cultures, different locations, um, and it's it's just really cool to all come together for one common goal. Much like it is uh, when you're in a, in a duck blind. I've heard rumors of the the fans in philadelphia being some of the most passionate football fans in the world you got rocky balboa there's a big chicken wing eating contest that takes place called wing fest i believe i don't know if they still have it but there's like what they call fanatics in that area very passionate americans um do you see that? Do you appreciate that passion when you're in that huddle and is the philadelphia audience and fan base different from what you're used to to answer your last question, yes, definitely different than what I'm used to and definitely as passionate as any fan base I've ever seen. Um, it's it's pretty special. Um, it's it's really special when you're winning and things are going great. Uh, when you're losing or you're struggling, obviously it, it makes it a little tougher, but um, I, I support and I, I think we all love the the passion that they bring. Right now it obviously is unfortunate because they, they're not in the stadium um, as as much. They're, they're allowing a couple in the stadium, but uh, – it, it is a different environment. It's a different culture up here. Football is uh, is everything out here, and people's weeks are either good or bad, whether the Eagles have win or lose. And and so we got a lot we got a lot at stake for for the city of Philadelphia every time we go out there on Sunday. But uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. And I know that we're talking about you know the camaraderie of hunting and the passion and the culture. I know that you're, that's a big part of, you know, you have Wentz brothers outdoors. You work really close with your brother, which is so awesome to see. That's what's so special about the outdoors is keeping family and friends together. But I have a, I just, I, I'm trying to figure out like, how does this maturity process take place for somebody that has literally elevated himself in all aspects of life, whether it was athleticism, his strength, his endurance, his, his fitness levels. And then you have to have the patience and you have dogs and you have hunting camp and you have the responsibility of loaded guns. You're kind of at that uh, a level that a lot of people look at, like when they're seven or eight years old and be like, I want to be Carson Wentz. I want to be Joe Montana. I want to be Steve Young. So is it a huge difference, Carson Wentz? 
sense from when you were under those Friday night lights and you were running through that paper that the cheerleaders were holding at your high school senior game? Is it different running out now or is it comparable to that same adrenaline and that same feeling that you get of just being in duck camp with your buddies and the love of life and just those Friday night lights and now it's the NFL or is it just a huge difference and it's not even comparable? Yeah, I'll say game day is very similar. Um, it, it's that same kind of um, just energy and passion in that atmosphere. Um, that's definitely the same on game day. The biggest difference is everything else that goes into it. It is a, it is a full-time job. It, it's the daily, the daily grind, all the film study, all the meetings, um, the workouts in the off season, it's a year round job. And so, um, but, but game day, um, there's still nothing better. It's still just like, um, you know, the Friday night lights that is to me, I think Friday night lights still takes the cake. That's still probably the, as fun as football gets um, when you're playing with the guys that you grew up um, right down the street from, but um, that, that same energy and that same camaraderie still, still comes out uh, on game day. How, how do you position yourself, Carson Wentz to be able to be, there's not a lot of people in your position that show their overlying love and pride for the outdoors and not just the outdoors. We're not talking about snow skiing here and being on the water on a boat in July. We're talking about hunting camp. We're talking about, I've seen posts of yours about, you know, getting deer camp and food plots and trail cameras hung. I've seen your guys, your guys, online TV show that you work with the outdoor channel and Mo TV and, and Wentz brothers outdoors. Um, why are you so unapologetic, Carson, about your upbringing, your lifestyle, the culture, and your love of being an American hunter, fisher, gatherer? Yeah, I think for me, it's just being authentic, you know, being authentic to who I am. You know, I, you know, my faith is, is number one in my life. And obviously, I'm football is my job and I love it and my family, but hunting is a, a serious passion of mine. And for me, it's just about being myself, being authentic and not letting what the world says or what people, you know, maybe the naysayers, you know, sometimes people don't want to hear about hunting and, and what goes into that. But for me, it's like, if I'm not talking about it, then I'm not being me. And so, you know, something I enjoy, something I'm passionate about, and I'll never apologize for, for being passionate about it. And do you ever take criticism in the media and do you respect the other point of views and how do you, how does a guy in your position because just being a starting quarterback in the nfl comes with enough stress and responsibility as is how how does a, how does somebody in your position carson do you do you manage it do you, are you just staying as tactful and 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 legitimate as far as like the ethics of, of hunting goes and the respect and the compassion for the animals that we pursue do you try to educate people carson wentz on here's why we hunt here's how we cook a deer backstrap here's how we cook a mallard breast do you go that far or do you just kind of keep it if somebody does say something do you kind of just shrug it off and just hopefully they they they, they learn for themselves yeah, I think it's a little bit of both. Um, you know, if, if things are being said in the media and those sorts of things, to be honest, um, I've learned to not listen to the media um, because they're always talking one way or one way or another. And so whether it's positive or negative about football, about life, it's something that I just try and stay away from and not get caught up in. Uh, but as far as, you know, educating and um, and those sorts of things, I think it, there's a time and a place and it's something that I don't back down from. And I do try and educate people, whether it's my teammates or coaches or people that I work with or other people that ask questions. I definitely want to try and help educate. And for me, I'm still learning. I'm still um, always trying to learn as much as I can about, you know, different aspects of hunting or different animals, different species, all those things. Um, and so I'm always trying to learn myself and educate others uh, when it, when it applies for sure. And when you say educate yourself, Carson, has it been an education process for you when it comes to a, a partner like you, Canuba, and what the results you're seeing with your dogs? Did you know that a food like that and where I'm going with this, Carson Wentz, is being an NFL quarterback? You can't just go to McDonald's and eat it three times a day, right? You can't, you can't, you nope. got to watch your nutrition. You got to be, you got to watch your fitness. You got to watch your heart rate. You got to watch your conditioning. You got to watch it all. Same with the duck dog. Same with the pheasant dog. Did you edge, have you always been that keen on what it takes to let a dog live his or her best life? Or has that been an education process for you? Like it has for me of seeing the, the ultimate difference that a company like in brand and food like you can can make in a dog's life. Yeah, without a doubt, it's been an educational process. I think for me in college, when I got my first dog, I was just buying what I could afford. You know, I was just 
trying to get her the best food I could, um, for the price. And, um, I was still learning hunting. I was still learning, you know, what a duck dog pheasant dog was supposed to do and what that all looked like. So that was educational in the first place. Um, but then, you know, obviously being in the NFL, having another dog and now having a third dog, um, and seeing the benefits of the nutrition. And now, you know, just about two years ago, I started my own diet and seeing, you know, took out some dairy, some gluten, some different things. I've seen the benefits in my own life. And I've now seen it from, uh, the new dog food from Yukonuba and how it's, sustains these dogs on you know some of these three four day hunts that um they gotta go they gotta go and you see they're tired but they're they still got to go and so it's it's really cool to see um their nutrition and how it's benefiting them in the field the same way i take my nutrition and it benefits me on the field as well so when you start talking about these three or four day hunts carson wentz what is your preference do you want to see a english pointer just standing tall with his tail in the air, knowing that there's a rooster underneath him within the within five feet of his nose, his or her nose. Or do you want to see a 60-yard swim for a mallard drake on its back floating that you just called in and ethically harvested over the decoys? Is there? Do you like them both equally? Or if you had one to pick from and you and your dad and brother got to go out on one more hunt, which would it be? I'd be hunting ducks over water for sure. Nice. Um I love, I love all of it, but, um, I think what really made me fall in love with hunting when I was in college was duck hunting, um, and chasing them over water. You know, we'd be fortunate enough to, you know, shoot three, four, five some days, you know, and, and that was a good day. And, uh, I just fell in love with it. And so I would definitely do that. And I've never really hunted with pointers either. Uh, my dogs all flush and do that, but, um, yeah, mallards over water or really any ducks over water is definitely my my preference. I love hearing that because a lot of guys that I know that you've hunted, you know, being from around the Dakotas and Minnesota, Western Minnesota, Iowa, Kansas, Nebraska, you even get yep. down into Oklahoma into the peanut fields, Carson, there's a lot of dry field hunting going on. You go to Canada, I don't know if you've been in Saskatchewan or Alberta or Ontario, Manitoba, but the dry peas can be unbelievable for that time of year in September and the mid up to mid October. Do you enjoy a really, really strong dry cornfield hunt along the Missouri River maybe somewhere around Western North Dakota, just a little bit East of Montana border and blue skies cold with a little bit of a wind out of the Northeast, maybe sun in their eyes, maybe the Northwest and you're on an afternoon hunt, but do you enjoy that dry field power that mallards can give you too? Absolutely. I mean, to me, there's something about just duck hunting and mallards in a field is, is unique. And I didn't realize until I came out to New Jersey and started hunting ducks that they don't really see ducks in a field. And I didn't realize that's only in certain locations. I grew up in North Dakota and I've seen it. It was a common, common thing. And so when we do go back and we do get to hunt in the Dakotas or any of those areas, um, I definitely do love field hunting, but uh, my gut would always be to, to choose um, sitting in some cattails on the side of a pond um, and, and lighting it up. Oh, I like that. Um, what about the vocalization process? You're, you're a team leader. You're audibling a big part of duck hunting is audibles. If they're not doing this, move the, move the blocks. If they're not doing this, get the jerk string, move the mojo, get it under some overhang, whatever it is. Yep. You got an audible as an athlete. You got an audible as a quarterback. You're the team leader. You're calling the plays. You're audible. You might change the play right in mid sentence, you know, mid hike or whatever, you know, whatever you call it, mid formation. Um, how is that? comparable and do you take your leadership skills on the football field that you've had through your career into a hunt and you and your brother work together as this team that you know all these moving parts there's so many moving parts of a successful duck or goose hunt do you apply those leadership skills and those communication skills and that ability to change and adapt into your hunting like you do in football absolutely um you know I, i've been fortunate enough you know i really fell in love with hunting in college and i had some good buddies that have been doing it for a lot longer than me and so I, oftentimes i'll go with people that that know a lot more than i do um but when it is you know just some of us going and my brother and i and those things we definitely i mean you know the deal everyone hey that that decoy's throwing them off or the mojo has got to turn those off you know that's always it's always something you gotta always fix something and maybe that's Maybe that's the leadership aspect. It might just be, you know, a little ADD kicking in. Um, you know, you never know which one of those it is, but definitely take that approach and always trying to, to make adjustments on the fly. 
I, and do you think that you're better at it and you've learned it quicker in the hunting arena because you're doing it on a daily basis, basis from Pop Warner to high school to college to the NFL ranks of being a co- starting quarterback? Absolutely. And, and I think um, that's just kind of how I've been wired ever since I was a kid. I'm always a, a problem solver, trying to make things better, be efficient, all of those things. That's how I've been wired. And so that's how I am with football. That's how I'm with hunting. That's how I am with um, really anything that I do in life. Give me an idea of what it takes timing wise, Carson, because as a hunter, timing is everything. When do you call the shot? You got to know what position the duck's in. If these two are lighting in, do you wait and and call the shot at the right time when the eight behind them are doing it and they just got more confidence because you were patient on these two? When do you apply that in football as far as timing goes and here's what always blows my mind about a guy like you is how you can deliver a ball to a certain spot of a route when the receiver's back is almost still to you knowing that when that receiver's head turns and his peripheral catches the spin and the flight of that ball it's in his hands but it's not like you wait for him to cut and then he's wide open and you hit him all the time a lot of times your timing is everything on pinpointing the accuracy of that pass and I've never understood how you do that is that just repetition or are you born with a talent that you know that you got to put the ball here right now and the receiver's going to turn at the right time and nail it or is that just done through the preseason and you guys get on the same page as each other yeah i mean the most of it is through repetition it is through building that um that chemistry with your receiver or you know you're running back whatever um but there is some innate ability and some you know some physical skills that come in into play with with timing and those sorts of things and and i think it is i mean it is a huge part of of what i do in football and for guys that can't anticipate and can't you know, you know, throw with a sense of timing and, and urgency um, usually don't last in, in the NFL. And so it's such a huge part of what I do. And um, in terms of hunting, I mean, timing, you talk about calling the shot, you know, sometimes I get, I get stressed about it because you're never calling it at the right time. You're always like, do we shoot the two? Do we not shoot the two? Well, it's only two of us. So if we shoot two, that's a win anyway. Do, do you take them? Do you not? Um, and you're always, you're always second guessing yourself, but I, I think that's some of the fun um, that you have and that you learn and, and grow from so just like football. It's the repetitions. It's, it's learning the birds. Um, and it's learning, you know, the environment that you're in. Carson, talk to me about the ability to fail, the desire to fail, to become a better champion in the long run. And in hunting, you're not going to get them every day. There's going to be things like mother nature. The migration might be a little off. You might pick the wrong spot. You might not get on the X because you woke up a little late and somebody beat it to you like a state, you know, maybe like North Dakota where you can, you know, go post the field or get permission and you're freestyling. How does that apply in your hunting life and football, your professional football life, Carson Wentz, when it comes to being able to learn something, be a sponge and knowing that you just threw an interception, but in 10 minutes, at the most, maybe five minutes, you have to go right back out there and get right back in that huddle and, and face that, that, that on the road crowd, that away crowd, just on you, just riding you bad. And then in hunting, you go in there and you might not get them one day. You might only get two days that week to hunt. And you go out there on a Saturday and you just don't get them. Something goes wrong. How do you pick yourself back up to go out there Sunday when you know that it's not going to be windy? It might be balmy. There might even be mosquitoes out. How do you tell a kid what, that wants to get into hunting or kid that wants to persevere into football on what it means to learn from your failures yeah i mean nobody likes failing you know you don't grow up like i can't wait to fail but i think through athletics i've learned that it's okay that it's okay and quite frankly your successes and your victories uh are you appreciate them so much more when you have failed um and and i think the same thing applies with hunting i mean if you went out every day and limited out on birds you'd get bored and you wouldn't appreciate it you'd be you'd be spoiled you'd probably be living in argentina also um and you know you wouldn't appreciate it the same and if you went out and shot a big buck on the first day of deer deer season you just don't appreciate it the same as if you were hunting that buck for three straight months and it finally all came together and i think it's um it has a way of teaching you patience and a and you know, kind of resiliency and, and consistency, but um, you also learn a lot about yourself and your character um, when you fail, whether that's hunting, whether that's football, whether that's life in general, you got to be willing to make mistakes and be honest and say, Hey, I screwed up. I messed that one up, but I'm going to get it next time. So when you do come off the field after you throw a pick, which happens to the greatest quarterbacks in the history of the f- game of football, 
Yes, sir. Are you of the mindset, Carson Wentz, of hurry up defense and pick the quarterback off, get a three and out, and get me back in there? I want the ball right away because I am not going out on that note right now. Absolutely. I think as a competitor, um, I've thrown I've thrown plenty of picks in my life from since I was a kid. And you learn that if you dwell on it, if you sit on it, if you let it, you know, kind of stay in your mind, um, you're going to just be worse. You got to go out with the same attack mentality um, and, and confidence in yourself that you're going to get it done. And um, that's how I've been wired. And that's that's the approach I have to take um, in football and in, in everything. So with your you don't nobody likes to fail that was very well said and i completely agree but with your ability to get over a failure and be ready to go again and become a champion right away again how does that apply to your wild game cooking carson wentz do you because i talk to a lot of people that hate to eat duck because they say it tastes like liver or um, they don't cook it right or they don't like wild game because it tastes quote unquote gamey do you do you do you hang your head at people that say that or are you kind of like out of the box unorthodox thinker like you got to be to be a quarterback you got to think outside the box yep. you got to be clever you got to be witty so are you and your brothers like getting back to the camp your brother you and you and saying hey let's get these breasts off the bone i want i got this vision of this like you do like you drop a play you're like i got this vision of what's going to happen with this food i got onions i got bell peppers i might do a little roux for a gumbo do you and your brothers like keep trying recipes and maybe failing at a sum to find that one that you would have enough pride to put in the Carson Wentz cookbook or the yeah, Wentz brothers I mean, cookbook. Yeah. I'd say this off season um, with COVID and everything going on, I did more cooking than I've ever done in my life. And that consisted of duck that consisted of venison that consisted of a lot of things that uh, I normally don't do a lot of cooking and, and I took pride in it and I did fail multiple times. Uh, but it, it was fun. You know, I'm the type that, Hey, we go harvest that duck. We go harvest that, that, that deer, whatever. Like I want to cook it. I want to eat something fresh. Um, even if it doesn't taste great, I want to give it a whirl. And so I think that's something that my brother and I have definitely talked about. Um, just trying new things, trying to, to grow with our recipes, be willing to, to screw it up, but, um, try it again. And we, we still enjoy it as best we can. I think it's something, something special when it's something that you shot, harvested and cooked yourself, um, but you know, we're always trying to learn in that area. And do you, do you f apply those cooking skills kind of, do you, does the word pride come to mind of when you do serve that bounty at camp? Does your wife enjoy wild game? Do you love putting that platter of elk backstrap or moose, moose, a, a big old roast from a moose or whatever the game is? Do you take a lot of pride in that? Just like you do with your approach to football? I definitely do. I probably take more pride in that um, <laughs> just because uh, it's something that's it's special and it's it's kind of new to me. Like I said, it's it's new and it's something that I enjoy. And um, my wife usually doesn't enjoy it quite the same way I do. Um, but that's why I got to keep getting better. Got to keep getting better so that I find something that uh, tastes good to everybody. Well, give me an idea. Give me one that you've tried that you would recommend to me. Um, and just, I don't care what game it is because I like to hunt it all, but, uh, give me one that you would recommend that's on the top of your tongue right now, tip of your tongue right now, I should say. Yeah, I did some, uh, duck breasts this off season, um, in a cast iron skillet and I, um, just left them in some teriyaki and soy sauce, um, overnight. And then I made them with some rice and, um, I don't know if you've heard of yum yum sauce, but that makes everything taste better. So did some rice, did some duck breast, grilled them up in the cast iron skillet. Um, I did it twice. The first one was really good. The second one, I did the same thing. It wasn't very good. So I'm not sure what it was there, but, uh, we're going to, we're going to try and perfect that one, but going in a little Asian on it. Um, I thought, I thought it was a pretty good choice. Great call. Fried rice, uh, tempura duck, uh, duck noodles, um, uh, the big the big noodles that you would get in like a chow mein. I've done, I do it a lot. What Was it a different species on the first attempt and the second attempt of duck? Um, I, they were both mallards, so I don't know if, if I screwed something up or what, but um, or maybe the first time it just tasted better because to me I was so proud of it. And then re I realized the second time, maybe it's not as good as I thought. <laughs> it's, uh, wild game cooking is the most like fulfilling thing that I've done in my life of being able to 
that you know what I mean, Carson Wentz, about the sustainability of what we get to do. That you go out and you you have friends that you grew up with that are farmers, and those farmers are growing these crops that are feeding America and other countries. They're not just feeding us humans; they're feeding rodents and coyotes and birds and ducks and geese and deer and pheasants and all of these different animals. And then all of a sudden, Carson Wentz and his brother go in there and knock on that door and ask the farmer Joe, "Can we hunt your cornfield or can we hunt this slew on your property?" And now those ducks come in there and you guys are lucky enough and good enough at your, with your skill set to get them in close and harvest them ethically. And then you get to go back and pluck them, get the meat off of the bone or cook a full, you know, a full mallard, in, yep. you know, with all the skin on. Isn't that a cool lifestyle, Carson Wentz, of being able to go in and see it come full circle of now you take that duck that was feeding on this farmer's crop that now you're putting it on the table to feed your family. I just don't think there's a cooler lifestyle. Hundred percent. I mean, it's like you, like you said, it's it's so fulfilling. Um, it's 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 the whole circle of life. It's doing it all. Um, sustainability off the land. I mean, all of it is as a hunter, it's so fulfilling. And then ideally, like I said, you learn every time, and um, it keeps tasting better and better, and it, it's even more satisfac- uh, satisfying. So, with the ability to make something taste better, have you ever personally? seen in all of your years of owning dogs or being around duck dogs or pheasant dogs have you ever seen a dog devour a food like they do with you canoe but personally i have not i've i can hear my dog eating from at least 100 yards away a full football length away i can hear some of my black lab or yellow labs eating do you do you experience the same thing now that you mention it that's 100 percent true i i think my dogs have always been um they'll eat when they want and i this new food, this new formula, I've not seen them. I mean, they don't take a breath. They don't, they just, I mean, it's, it's almost one big bite. And my youngest dog Riggs, I mean, he's literally done eating his bowl in five seconds. I think I need, I need to work on that. (laughs) Uh, But it is, uh, it's impressive how excited, even my older dog who usually doesn't really care to eat, doesn't care about a lot of things. um, When that food bowl comes out, she's like jumping on me. So it's, it's definitely, uh, you can tell, you can definitely tell. Is Riggs named after the Washington Redskin, or was there a Riggs that a John Riggs that played in the NFL? Where does Riggs come from? Riggs comes from out of nowhere. Um, just tried to find a cool name. So if I if I named him after somebody, um, they can they can take the credit on that one. But I I don't know anybody named Riggs. I just thought it was a pretty ba name for a duck dog it is a ba name it's a really good name but you know what i think i'm uh wrong i think it was riggins it was there a john riggins i don't you're a football guy i thought that in my yeah. mind i've heard riggins or it, it for sure it was not Riggs though so that's a cool name man um yeah. what kind of dog guy are you carson are you are you a seat cover guy or a leather guy and do you open the back door and place them on the seat and let them feel that heat after a hunt or are you a camper top guy with a kennel in the back that they kennel up in there until they get to the duck lodge or your camp or your do your dogs sleep on the couch do they sleep up on the bed with you and your wife how much of a dog guy is carson wentz yeah, I think I've been one of all of those in my life up to this point. I think my dog in college, when it was just her, she was in the truck all the time. She sat up front with me when we'd road trip. Uh, when we'd hunt and have gear, she'd go in the kennel. Um, and then I've kind of transitioned. Now i got three dogs. So three dogs in the in the back seat of a truck or something is a little chaotic, um, especially the two younger ones that are trying to fight all the time. Um, so I got the gunner kennels for them. And, you know, I'll, I'll throw the insulation covers over them to keep them warm but for the most part they're in the gunner kennels now and we're traveling and as far as sleeping in the bed that was uh that was good up until we got a third and then that that, now they're out of the room and do you find yourself equal love for all the dogs carson or do you fall in love with one dog more so than maybe the one that's his or her counterpart and do you feel guilty if it does happen or are you just equal love, for, you know, just peace and love, peace and love for all your dogs? I try and tell myself that I'm equal love, <laughs> um, but <laughs> I think I have moments when each one of them is my favorite. You know, I got I, my wife and I actually just talked about this because we got our older one who's very relaxed. She she'll get out maybe just a couple times now to hunt. Um, but for the most part, she's probably probably done she's a real house dog and then i got my middle one which is her son that's kind of 
right in the middle, a little relaxed, but he still likes to go. He still likes to hunt. And then the youngest is just go, go, go 24 seven. And I think they all have a time and place when they're my favorite. Um, so it's kind of funny to, to see, um, if for hunting, which one's my favorite, depending on who's listening, who's doing the best. Um, or if the, neither of them are listening, I'm going home and snuggling with, with mama Henley. Um, because she's, uh, she she missed me and she's pissed that I didn't take her hunting usually. Does Riggs or Henley or the what was the third one's name? So Jersey's the middle one. Jersey. Do any of them ever get to go on the gridiron with Carson Wentz and catch a frisbee on a on a go route like a nine pattern down the sideline? Do they break? Do they jump off sides all the time? Are they really steady dogs? <laughs> and do they ever get to just go and just catch a football? I mean a frisbee on the gridiron out of Carson's hand. I haven't really done the Frisbee thing, um, so I should try that. I'm not sure if any of them could catch it, to be honest. Um, but uh, for the most part, they're steady. Um, whenever they're not steady, it's usually my fault because we haven't trained in a while. Um, so that's usually what happens in season. If I'm, you know, finally November, December hits around here and I get out on one of the off days, I probably haven't trained them for a couple, couple weeks too many. But um, for the most part, they're pretty steady and pretty good listeners. Have they been on the gridiron with you? Um, not to catch a frisbee, but uh, they've ran around on the football field plenty. Wow, lucky dogs! What's next, Car? What's next, Carson Wentz? It's a Thursday right now. Yep. Um, Sunday's usually game time. There is some Monday night football. There's Saturday games. Um, I don't even know what nights are. The UFC seems like they got to fight every night now, as opposed to just back when when I was watching it a bunch. When you get a pay per view once, maybe every other month, but is it is it game is it game film right now are you in the are you in this the classroom right now on a Thursday and a Friday breaking down the defense and the schematics of what they're going to be doing on the field coming this Sunday are you are, are you too busy dreaming about hunts to really put too much energy into the coming game how does it work out for a guy that loves hunting so much to have to be in football season at the same time you're supposed to be in the duck blind or the deer woods no absolutely I mean, listen, football is my job and I take it very seriously. So when I'm at work, when I'm here at the facility, um, I'm all in, I'm locked in on football and, um, you know, maybe in a meeting will end and my brother will send me a trail camera picture or something, you know, Hey, the deer we've been targeting, he was out last night, those sorts of things. Um, it's always good to get, get your mind off football here and there, but, um, you know, Thursdays just finished up practicing. We'll got, we got film and meetings the rest of the day and Friday, the same, same type of thing. And, um, we usually have the afternoon and evenings off Friday. So every now and then I'll get out in a deer stand or something on a Friday night. Um, but, but we try and find the right balance. You can't, I mean, you can definitely, there's a point you can overwork uh, yourself and you got to have some, some mental breaks, whether that's Friday nights or uh, Mondays, which is our off days and those sorts of things. But like I said, I'm all in locked in on football when I'm here at work, but uh, when I get home, I'm definitely uh, can put my mind on some other things. Carson Wentz, you're the man. I truly appreciate your time. I'd like you to end this, if you don't mind, on getting a little uh, a little testimonial for me on the two words, work ethic. Talk to our listeners, and we have a lot of listeners that are in their 18 to 25-year range. You're not much older than that if you are. Um, what does work ethic mean, Carson Wentz, to become the best ethical outdoorsman there is? If you do want to go to the NFL or the major leagues or the NHL or the NBA or be an Olympic swimmer or wrestler, what does work ethic mean? Did your dad teach you the importance of work ethic? Did you split logs in the winter and do chores daily? Why are we getting away from that in today's society, Carson? And can we, can we at least get a message out there, please, sir, on the importance of having a work ethic and where that work ethic can take us? in this life yeah absolutely i think my, my dad my mom um my older brother i think growing up in north dakota the the hard work ethic is really instilled in you and i mean i wouldn't be here without the work ethic that was instilled in me as a kid i wouldn't be in, in this position um believe me i've been gifted i've god's blessed me with an ability to throw the football but without the work ethic i would not be here and i think um it is sad sometimes to see you know younger generations and the social media, the cell phones, the technology, and how that kind of takes away from work ethic and people really kind of per trying to pursue their dreams sometimes um, and, and coming up short because they lack that work ethic. But, um, you know, you, you get out what you put in. 
And at the end of the day, if you have a dream, you got to go for it and you have to have the desire. You have to have, a, you know, the goal oriented mindset um, and you have to be willing to work at it. And like we talked about earlier, you got to be willing to fail. You got to be willing to fail and learn from your mistakes and keep getting back on it. Um, if you want to succeed at anything in life. Carson Wentz, I'm 45 years old. I probably would hit the ground running right now. I'd say it probably, if I had to guess, a 4.79 to a 4.8, Do I make the team as one of your wide receivers or potentially a tight end at a 4.79? Tight end, you definitely could. <laughs> Receiver, no, no, receiver, no. Chance. That's about right around what I ran. So <laughs> you can be quarterback. I'll tell you that. When I was playing college baseball, Carson Wentz at UNLV, I was more so, uh, and obviously the '60s, the baseball measurement. But I was more so coming out of high school about a four, five, five, four, five, eight. That can't even make it as a receiver in the NFL, can it? No, that that'll work. That'll work. You'd be surprised. I think forty times and all those things sometimes it can. Uh, can be overlooked and it can be overvalued, I should say. And, and you know, lots of guys that are out there are running four sixes, four fives, um, and making lots of plays on Sunday. So there's there's a lot more that goes into it than just running straight lines. So, so you'd have had a chance. If you last question, I know you gotta go. Give me the one quarterback in NFL history that you would like to sit and have lunch with and be able to ask him any questions about his career if you had the opportunity. Maybe you've already done it. Yeah, I was always a, a big fan of Brett Favre growing up. I grew up actually a Vikings fan, so it was really conflicting because he was a Packers guy. Um, but uh, I just loved the way he played, loved the, you know his approach, how much fun he had. Um, and I have gotten a chance to talk to him a couple different times. And, and he's a passionate outdoorsman as well. So um, we talked more about deer hunting than, uh, than football the couple times we talked. But uh, a lot of respect to that guy, uh, both on and off the field. The absolute warrior and winner, just a pure champion. Where can our audience find you, Carson, besides your quarterbacking skills on Sunday game day? They see you all over ESPN or Fox Sports or whatever their method and content of sports is. Where can they find Wentz Brothers Outdoors? And can we look forward to new episodes right around the corner? Yeah, we're, we're making episodes as we speak um, coming out, I believe, every Tuesday. I sometimes lose track of the days in season, but uh, my brother and, and our guys are working hard on those. Um, but we got good episodes coming. I think we're about halfway through our season this year. Um, you can find us on Wentz Throws Outdoors um, on Instagram, and that'll take you to all the links that you'll ever need. Um, and, you know, it's been cool to, to make content with my brother um, and see us, you know, even improve over the years from when we first started grabbing a camera and saying, hey, let's go film each other. Um, and now we're, we're making some actually pretty cool content, both photos and, and videos, and it's been fun. And we'll, see, uh, we're, we'll see where it goes. Well, I'd like to hunt ducks with you sometime, buddy. I'd like to uh, hear you on a duck call and have maybe uh, we could take turns calling the shot. We could bring a dog, your dog one day, my dog one day, Axel, and you have Riggs or whoever we choose to bring. But I'd love to share camp with you, man, and I truly appreciate it. And congratulations on such an awesome career. Absolutely. Well, we can probably uh, try and make it happen one time. Appreciate it, man. That's Carson Wentz, NFL quarterback and a lover of the outdoors, Yukonuba Duck Dog Podcast. He is a feeder of Yukonuba, and he is an absolute gem to uh, be able to voice what the outdoors mean to him and have such a huge audience to say it and never hold back on it. Appreciate you, Carson Wentz. Any closing words, my man? No, I think we're good. I appreciate you having me, and... Uh... Yeah, thanks. Thanks a bunch. Thank you for everything. Carson Wentz, you guys, thank you so much for subscribing to the podcast. You can find us on the Foul Life TV on Instagram and thefowllife.com for any needs. If you want to hear a special guest on here, just give us a shout and tell us you want to hear Tom hit that button. This is going to be 2 a.m. Logic. The song is called My Foul Life. Foul Life.